Hello friends. For victory, in any battle, it is vital to know, who the enemy is, and why, they are after you. Obviously, we know that narcissists are our greatest adversary. But did you know they are not after you just for the fun of it? Narcissists hate you for at least several reasons, of which, you need to be aware. A narcissist knows, he will be ultimately, defeated. However, as every survivor, is experientially aware, this knowledge has not deterred him from his malicious endeavors. He is utilizing every second, of his remaining time, to hinder the spread of God's truth in the earth. And we, as carriers of the truth message, were his primary targets. If we do not expose them for their lies and destruction, we become their accomplices, by consenting with who they are, and what they do. However, because we do not consent, we choose to expose them fearlessly with love in our hearts. Though we realize, that narcissists' opposition against us, is more about truth, than it is about us. Does he want to make our lives difficult? Absolutely. Does he glean, some perverted kind of joy from our misery? Undoubtedly. But he doesn't oppose us, simply for the benefit, of opposing us. A narcissist unleashes all the demonic forces of hell, upon God's people, with the intent of rendering us missionally ineffective. His aim is to shut us up. When the truths, and its excellencies, of Jesus Christ are communicated, the lost are reconciled, and the reconciled are strengthened. There is real power in the name of Jesus, and narcissists do not want that soul quickening, faith strengthening, God glorifying power, put on display. This is why they launch flaming darts in our direction. They want to distract you, distress you, and make you feel morally discredited, so that you will shut up about Jesus. A narcissist hates you, because you remind him, of who he can't be. This means that when a narcissist, sees, you and I, he gets a potent reminder of God, and who he can never be. They are tremendously jealous of this. A narcissist hates you, because you have the power to crush his head. When Jesus came to earth, he gave his authority, to you and I, by assuring, I give you authority over all the power of the enemy. Luke 10 19. Of course, this scares the narcissist stiff, and so he works tirelessly, to keep God's people, from knowing about the power they have in Christ. A narcissist hates you, because God loves you. A narcissist knows the power of God's love, he knows, those who are convinced God loves them, remain in close relationship with God. And when you're close to God, His voice drowns out all others. Because of this, a narcissist doesn't want you close to Jesus, and so he tries to drive the wedge, between you and Jesus, by relentlessly trying to get you to believe, that God is mad at you. How to stand against narcissists attacks? Here is some great news. By knowing why narcissists are after you, you know how to stand against his attacks. When he tries to tell you you're worthless, remind him that you're made in the image of God. When he attempts to convince you that you're powerless, remind him of the authority, given to you by Jesus. Luke 10 19. And when he argues that God doesn't love you, send him packing, with a reminder, that Jesus proved his love on the cross. Romans 5 8. Finally, always remember that nothing is more threatening to narcissists than someone who knows who they are and what they have in Christ. Brothers and sisters, we are on the verge of major changes about to start happening in the world with accelerated speed. The enemy is trying to silence us. I have created a backup channel on that shoot, as YouTube will probably start shutting down many channels next month. Please subscribe to it to keep in contact, and the link is in the description box. I am including an interview, with a whistleblower exposing serious wickedness. A true hero, who inspires me, and I hope inspires you as well. God bless you. Please, remember. Truth, is freedom. I'm gonna talk about geoengineering. But I want to share a story with you. Every time I'm asked to speak, I, I'm a, I public speak for a living. Um, I'll go into that. But I don't get nervous to speak to you. What I get nervous about is not getting emotional telling you my story. Because in 2002, 
shortly after 9-11, like a lot of military veterans, I raised my right hand and I took an oath to the Constitution to hopefully do something meaningful with my life, you know, 19 years old, unsure what I wanted to do. So I enlisted in the U.S. Air Force. My job in the U.S. Air Force was working in bioenvironmental engineering. So what bioenvironmental engineering is in the Air Force is equivalent to that of the OSHA and the EPA, if you're familiar with that. So we were an embedded liaison to make sure that we were tracking all of the aspects and impacts of the military, meaning what is the military doing and how is it impacting the environment because we were accountable for that. Being government, we did not get any special treatment. We just couldn't be fined being another federal agency. EPA can't, but not OSHA. So from the health side, it was knowing what you do in the Air Force. What does your job entail that is hazardous to your health? And I'm gonna give you an example. Let's say that you were an aircraft painter, you were a mechanic. My job would go out to make sure I knew everything that you did, what you were exposed to, and how to mitigate and engineer out those hazards. Because we needed to, one, it, it's your legal right to be working in a safe and healthful work environment. So throughout nine years, I worked as an industrial hygienist and an environmental specialist. One of, actually, there's two bases I was at that are called air logistics centers. What does that mean? It's not like a fighter wing, you know, it's not really fun and amazing. What they did is they took aircraft that around every 10 to 15 years, they were required to be dismantled down to the last screw. So that meant every single industrial process you can think about checking the metal integrity, making sure everything's good to go, or sometimes overhauling equipment. Part of my job in tracking the health hazards was to look at any time someone wanted to buy a chemical, any type of chemical, it was ordered through a system, and in that system, I had to go in there and say, you know, the country we're in, we're not allowed to use this. We need to substitute it out with something a little less hazardous, while also maintaining the integrity for a technical order, meaning for that process, it says you must use, you know, xylene or toluene to do this process. Well, I have to kind of fast forward. I want to say around 2006, I started kind of opening my eyes to how the military wasn't really what I thought it was. And people approached me knowing what I did for a living and said, have you ever heard of chemtrails? Well, I hadn't. And that sparked my interest. So I went online and I looked at chemtrails. I saw a lot of, you know, debunking, a lot of sites that were just kind of calling it a conspiracy theory. And I thought, well, geez, this is what I do for a living. Preventive health, making sure that people are not getting sick, especially in the workplace and by things that we're doing that can affect, you know, human health in the environment. To summarize it, in an attempt to debunk this conspiracy theory as I thought it was, I didn't debunk it. It literally changed my life. Um, like I said, this is hard for me because it's not easy standing here and telling my story. One day I was going through that computer system, which if you want to look it up, it's called an Air Force Form 3952. It is the approval of ha hazardous materials. I was finding tons and tons of large quantities of aluminum, barium, strontium in the forms of oxides and sulfates. And of course I knew that there's industrial processes you may not have heard of, but it's bead blasting, pneumatic sanding, shot peening. There is certain medias that's similar to that that is used. However, I had already accounted for that. I would sit and look at this computer system and say, this shop wants to order this paint. I'm going to tie it to a task. We had to know what was being used, why it was being used, tracking it cradle to grave on how we were going to dispose of it to be compliant with OSHA and the EPA. One of the legal requirements in approving these is looking at what used to be called the material safety data sheet. On that sheet, it's going to list the manufacturer. It's going to list some maybe acquired personal protective equipment that needs to be used or some ways to mitigate the exposures. These electronic MSDSs, did not have a manufacturer name. They were very vague. They almost looked to me like somebody had made it and scanned it into the system. So I asked the question, what is this being used for? I never got an answer, so I didn't approve it. And it sat there. And then the heat came down. Why aren't you, are you behind on your 3952s? Only a select few of us did that. So I started asking questions. And at that point, my demonization began. 
you know, I, I made my rank. I was decorated. I was a non-commissioned officer of the quarter. I won lots of awards. I had no reason for anyone to attempt to demonize me. So then I get moved over to the other air logistics center. There's only two in the Air Force, which is in Warner Robins, Georgia. This kind of carried with me. And I thought, you know what? Should I revisit this? Is it worth it? Did I hit something? Maybe it's need to know. I started finding the same things at Robbins Air Force Base. I was now doing some more investigation work. Part of what I did was to use a high volume air sampler to air sample um, up to, I'd say, a football field in about 10 minutes. I also conducted soil sampling because I thought, you know, if, if this is real and they are spraying this, it's gonna get to the ground. So I conducted air sampling, I conducted soil sampling, and I was getting high levels of these contaminants. When I started asking the question again under a new commander, I never in my life thought I would have somebody look me in the face and tell me, I am questioning you. Is there something wrong with you? You've been looking really depressed lately. You know I can put you under a mental evaluation for a, up to 120 days. Who would take care of your daughter? Because I was divorced at the time. As soon as I heard that, I knew. It validated everything I ever thought. And I thought, I've spent nine years of my life trying to protect human health, and here we are, violating law after law after law. Just sitting here, instead of protecting the people, we are poisoning the people. And I've never got up so much courage from that fear of being thrown in a cage, because when you're in the military, folks, you're a number. You are a number, and every aspect of your life is controlled. I was so lucky that my enlistment was coming up and I was supposed to re-enlist. I ran and did not look back, and I have been blowing the whistle and shouting ever since. And I left October 27, 2010. Thank you. It didn't just end there, though. You got to remember, there's a whole career field of people that work in bioenvironmental engineering. A lot of those people were told, do not talk to me. Do not talk to her, do not email her. They were given no contact orders. Because my biggest thing was, if I'm just so you know, dishonest, don't you think somebody would come out and say you know, she was never in the military or something negative to discredit me? They've ignored me, but they've tried to silence me. Every time I fly, I am pulled into a secret room. I, I literally am tagged in the system for the TSA. It is difficult. As an industrial hygienist, I do very well for myself, but it has been so difficult after leaving the federal government to maintain employment. Nowadays, everyone runs background checks on you, and the first thing they look at is, wow, here's a whistleblower. And you ask yourself, if this is true and we are spraying the people, where are the pilots? Where are the people? I don't know if you pay attention, but look at Snowden. Look at, look at Manning. People don't come forward because these supposed Whistleblower Act protections that you have are not enforced, they're not supported, and they really don't exist. But what I want you to take from this is to understand that I am being completely honest with you and that geoengineering is occurring, it's been occurring, it is not new, and your tax dollars are funding this. I 100% know that the U.S. Air Force was involved and it kind of I think back to all these things that I never had noticed. You don't, if you don't know what to look for, you can't look for something. And once I realized a process they were trying to hide, people have come out of the woodworks, from EPA compliance officers to ex-people that I worked with in my career field. Well, I cannot state for obvious reasons. I've had pilots come forward. I've had people come forward that actually load the canisters on the planes. These people don't come forward because they are afraid that they're gonna end up like Snowden. And I continue to speak to let people know, I've been screaming about this for three years and I'm still here. And why are you so afraid? Because many of these people are on active duty. And if you are willing to die for your country, supporting you know, the Constitution and defending us from enemies foreign and domestic, you are willing to die for your country, but now you're scared. You are scared and cowardly to talk about this. 
So I'm not just speaking to all of you in this room. I'm speaking to all those people that are going to watch this online and watch it on YouTube. Because you can come forward, you can help expose this, and we can stop it. So many people want to ask, why? Why is this occurring? That's for later thought. From weather modification to weather weaponry, there, there's numerous reasons under Agenda 21 and tons of theories. But my job as an industrial hygienist is to make sure that I comply with the laws and enforce them. So it is unethical every day for all the other people that are out there that work in preventive health or even physicians that aren't speaking about this, they need to. So one thing I want to tell you is what you can do about it. The biggest hurdle that we have is disinformation sites. I never say them, but I'm going to today so that you know if anyone ever gives these to you as a reference to debunk you, it's Metabunk and Contrail Science. Those are two websites that are ran by a government shill named Mick West. And he is a computer gaming programmer who tries to tell you about persistent contrails. So somebody who isn't even credentialed in chemistry or physics or ecology, none of that, is trying to tell you that you're crazy. Okay? So also on social media, don't just hit the share button. There are links. You have to understand that I have met people who used to be purposeful disinformation trolls, as we call them. These people are paid to pretend that they're you, to get you on board to believe a website or an article, just so that you look so vulnerable. And then later it will be deemed non-credible, and then you look non-credible. So please vet research. And if you have something to write with, I want you to take down my email. It is Kristen, K-R-I-S-T-E-N, Megan, M-E-G-H-A-N, at gmail.com. And by emailing me, I can give you some information for what I'm about to tell you. If you still don't believe it, or you still want to convince people, there's something you can do. You can take a glass jar. It needs to be a glass jar, so there's no BPAs. Take a rain sample and take a snow sample. I tried to disencourage the soil sampling because everyone's background of where you live is different. Because a lot of the materials that are used in geoengineering are natural occurring in Earth, just not in the industrialized form that they are used. So if you take these rain samples and you take the snow samples, email me. Because I cannot publicly tell you where to send them because we've actually been blackballed by labs who refuse to run our samples. And a problem that is occurring is people are sending in rain samples to labs that don't realize how low the limit of detection needs to be because these are nanoparticulates. They are very small. So if you email me, I can tell you where to send in your samples, and it's only around $50. That may be tough on some people, but it's way cheaper than maybe what you assumed. So I just want everyone to know and understand that of all things, of all the freedoms that we are losing, geoengineering is the number one issue that we are facing because you can have guns and money and you can have everything. If you don't have food and water and you are dying of respiratory or neurological illnesses, what does it matter? So you've heard about vaccines and you'll hear you know, about smart meters and you'll hear about other issues like fracking. These are all systemic effects. We are getting overexposed to toxins. People will tell you fluoride's in the water, but it's not a lot. It is a lot because you're getting it everywhere in your food, you know, water that you drink. Everything is, excuse me, is washed with that water. And you're getting your vaccines. All this, it's a coupled systemic effect and our bodies cannot metabolize these toxins. So I just want to thank you for taking the time to listen to my story. And I will continue to shout from the rooftops. I don't care how many jobs I lose. I don't care how many friends or family I lose. Because I took an oath. And in nine years, I was not able to honor that oath. But I am today. <laughs>